Hi everybody and welcome to the Helen Winder Show. I'm Helen Winder and my guest today is Benju. Hello. Hello Helen. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a psychologist by background. That's my, I used to be an academic, I used to teach psychology for many years. But I currently run my own training and coaching business and run, run events. So that's a sort of brief summary of what I do. But I used to do a bit of sales. Uh, for nine years I was a sales director okay. in the big back smoke. Uh -huh. Okay, so what do you do today? Well. If I go back to when I was teaching, I really loved teaching and when I went into sales, I lost that essence of creating interventions for people to change their lives and I always, I'm fascinated by human behaviour and, and I always, I, when I see people not doing what they love, it really irritates me, I thought, why does that happen? And I, I, was, I was that person for many years when I was in corporate, mm -hmm. not doing what I loved yeah. and I thought, well, you, you know, can't just talk to talk, you've got to walk it as well. So back in 2009, no, back in 2006, You've probably heard of Tony Robbins. Yes. You know, we all go to Tony Robbins, do the rah rah <laughs> And that really shifted me in relation to really, look, you've got to take control of your life. It's nothing to do with circumstances, environment. You, know, you can blame all those things, yeah. but at the end of the day, if you really want to do something, you've got to make the decision. So in 2006, I sort of made a decision to leave my job, but um, I didn't get my finances all done, so I did a bit of property. And in two th October 14th, 2007, I got the phone call from my sister saying the money's in a bank so I could hand my notice in and I'll not look back. So since then I started my coaching and training business mm -hmm. and um, my main focus is around sales training and um, uh, interventions within business or so working with business owners around mindset and stuff. But it's evolved really differently since then. It's amazing isn't it how we can start off in one mode and it evolves to be doing what we love mm, and that absolutely. is really key isn't it? Because yeah. Otherwise, we sort of clash all the time, we clash is. with ourselves. Yeah, and my business now looks very different to what it was when I first started. And people, you have a viewpoint of what your business, and people make a lot of presumptions, which is right in terms of how they should start. Yep. And I work with business owners, and they have a set way of how certain things need to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never called myself a business coach, but I work with businesses. Mm -hmm. The, the processes within businesses are more or less the same, whether you're selling a widget or whether you're providing a service. You know, the certain processes are consistent, but the variables are people. And what you find is 99% of business issues are to do with the people and the structure and people not keeping to their word, not doing their job efficiently, yeah. not having parameters, uh, no leadership, and those issues. So that's what I do within businesses. Okay. And the first three years, you know, what was great. It was very much sort of one-to-one -one work, working with businesses. Um, but then 2012, I wrote my first book, I'm an Entrepreneur, Get Me Out of Here. Mm -hmm. It was all about how, irrespective of your background, you can have the life you want. You know, don't be restricted by whether you've had a silver spoon, great academic, mm -hmm. or poor background. And I interviewed many entrepreneurs, and we found that there is no one pattern yeah. for you to follow your life. You can, if you, as long as you've got the right mindset and create, put yourself in the right environment, yeah. um, you, can, you can have what you want. Yes, and I think that's the that's the thing to get across to people is that you know what you want is possible. You you are not restricted mm. by anything, mm. only yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of the work I do, um, people can't. People start from the problem. Well, tell me what I need to do. Yeah. Show me the how. Yeah. I said, well, the how is easy. You can Google the how. Yeah. You know how to run a business, how to start this, how to do that. But what's your reason? What's your why mm. behind doing what you want to do? Because when you understand the reason you do certain things, the how looks after itself. Yeah. And there's plenty of resources and people around to help you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I, I instead I do a lot of work with schools as well. I go into schools, talk about entrepreneurship. And the one thing I try and emphasize with the kids is it's okay to fail. Yeah. And societies bred us a group of people who are afraid to fail, therefore they're afraid to try things. Mm -hmm. And when you don't try things, you don't follow what's in here. Mm -hmm. And then they, they, they live a life of settlement, of apathy, of, oh, it will do. Yeah. And then 30 years on, they look back and think, what, what happened there? Yeah. What happened there? Yeah. So my, my mission is to change one person's life every single day, yeah. whether that's for a tweet, for a talk, for a, a video like this, anything. Um, and creating the environment that can happen. So. Do you work with individuals? Do you go into larger organisations? How, how do you work? So as I said before, my business sort of changed over the last three or four years. Um, up to the first five years of my business is very much that. I do lots of one-to-one, -one, small businesses, large businesses, um, around the people, working with the people and getting them to a point whereby they're... Most people work at 60 to 70% capacity mm -hmm. and it's about how do you get to the point where they're 80, 90% and it's really listening to them. But over the last, I use social media a lot in my own business in yeah. terms of growing it. 
And naturally what you get is when you're working with clients, they say, oh, how do you do this? How do you use Twitter? How do you do Facebook? And so over the last year or so, um, uh, I'm working more around social media, okay. but it's a new project, a new brand I'm really excited about. That's the I'm an Entrepreneur brand. So I ran an event called Want to Be an Entrepreneur, which is for six formers and young adults mm -hmm. and businesses. And it's sort of mini rah rah sort of, there's like um, eight speakers, there's um, uh, singers, there's dancers. And it's all about getting someone from I can't to I can. Yeah. And when there are I can, the world of opportunity opens up. So that's what I'm doing now, as well as um, uh, launching a new business called I'm an Entrepreneur TV. Mm -hmm. so it's a bit like this, but um, it's going to be like a magazine type show. So yeah. imagine like breakfast TV. Yeah. So you've got entrepreneur news, expert interview, uh, VT from a, uh, doing an event or something. Yeah. And then, and then having features around tech and business new startups. So that's really exciting at the moment. So my first incarnation of my business was very much me to a few or me to one. But now I'm looking to do me to masses. Uh -huh. And through TV, through events, because that's why I can create those interventions. Social media so. and technology today opens up the door massively. hugely, doesn't massively, it? Massively. Yeah. And I, I, a lot of the work I do around social media, I call it social media. I've got this seven step thing called social media touch. Mm -hmm. And it's about every single touch has an impact on the world. Yeah. So understand why you do social media. People yeah. doing social media, they think, I've got to do it because so-and-so here is doing it. Yeah. And I said, why are you doing it? Well, because you, you, you do, don't you? Yeah. Everybody's doing it. Everybody, but yeah. why are you doing it? And, yeah. and when they realize well, what, why they should do it or why, what's their reason to do it, they then start understanding the platforms. Yeah. And you know, each platform is a different culture, a different country. Twitter is oh. different to Facebook, to different to LinkedIn. Absolutely, the interactions are so different. That's right. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. And it is understanding that. Okay, fine. Yeah, we all need to do social media. And so many people will say to you, "Oh, get on Twitter, get on Facebook, do this, do that." But understanding actually, one, who you are, correct, and what you're doing, yeah, what it is that you're potential audience will benefit from that's right and how they engage with you and how you engage with them Absolutely. and don't do hard sell no exactly well you know twitter you know well, sorry social media is just it's the same as in real life mm -hmm. if you go to a cocktail party how would you interact if you go to a pub you wouldn't go in there and say in a cocktail party everybody please go i've got to say something yeah and that's what people do on twitter so no engage converse you know it's just Absolutely. a platform it's just an enabler yeah. to be who you want to be but people have this well i've got a computer i've got a screen and they turn into someone different. Yeah. Well, it's really uh, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. And it, it's making sure that the message is consistent as well. Because okay. otherwise people are like, sorry? Exactly. Who are you? So, you know, I'm all about creating interventions, creating environments where people can change. Mm -hmm. Because if the environment's not there, people need to feel confident they can change. And there's a safety net if things go wrong. Yeah. So with all the platforms I'm trying to create, it's creating an environment where people can change. Yeah. Um, and willing to change and knowing that there's someone there to pick up the pieces if uh, if they fail. And we all fail. I fail, oh, you fail, we all fail. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And if we get it right, then the others yeah. following our generation of the future will absolutely, absolutely, we'll, we'll also absolutely. get it right. And, and they need to know that. You know, in schools, unfortunately, and I put this on record, they're still teaching um, education as if it was 1950s, 1960s. They haven't changed. No. And that's one of the reasons I created my event. My, I was helping my boy doing his GCSE business. And uh, looking at the syllabus, I nearly died because I thought it's, it's teaching things like VAT returns and balance sheets and profit and loss. I'm like, there's nothing in there about you know, you know how to how to create a brand, how to create a business, how to follow your passion, how to uh, understand the market and, and be someone that you can create something that values the world and this sort of thing. And that's part of the reason, what a lot of the reason why I created my event to to give these young people an exposure to a type of education that they're not used to in the normal system. That's right. I mean, the basics are good, Yeah. but we need to build up a little massively, bit, massive, a few more massive, levels up. Massively, yeah. So, yeah. you know, part of my mission in terms of the I'm an Entrepreneur is to change government policy, yeah. to get them to understand that the way you are teaching our kids today um, uh, is not fit for purpose. Mm. It's not fit for the market. So no. education is essential, but the right education is yeah. essential. It has to evolve like we have to evolve, massively. like business evolves. 100%. You know, things. if we did what we did five, ten years ago, yeah. we'd be dead. No, so exactly. why are schools still teaching <laughs> how they're teaching five, ten years ago? Oh. <laughs> they won't go on that bad. No, that's another one. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> So how can people get in touch with you? Uh, well, if, if, unfortunately, I've got quite an unusual <laughs> name. So if you Google me, I'm all over the shop. But my Twitter is Beiju Solanke, at Beiju Solanke. Mm -hmm. um, that's the best way to get hold of me. Um, and uh, yeah, just my website, beijusolanke.com. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I do a lot of blogging, I do a lot of articles. So if you Google my name, you'll see where I'm about. And I'm at different events filming and, and participating and speaking as well.
top tips for anybody in business or starting out in business what would be your top three tips the first one i would do what you love mm -hmm. it's very easy to chase the money yep. chase the shiny object what's the new thing that's happening now oh let's can i make an easy buck is in the short term you might be successful yep. but do what you love and do what you love and, but be pragmatic about it. So the, the thing that you love might be the, the growing of something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then pick a product or service that a market needs, but do the thing in the business that you love best. Yeah. So don't worry about saying, well, you might love, I don't know, knitting, but is there a business in it? No, but there might be areas within the industry that you could create a business out of. That's yeah. one, tip number one. Tip number two, get social. So. What that means is social media is an enabler. Mm -hmm. So it's about how do you behave online that's congruent with your offline message. Yeah. So when you meet um, uh, someone offline, mm -hmm. am I seeing the person that I see online? And a lot of people, there's a disconnect. You know, you mm -hmm. know Thomas Powell. Thomas yeah. talks this. Sorry, Thomas talks about this a lot. Whereby the person you see online is not the person you see face to face, and congruency is key. Yeah. So there's going to get to a point whereby. People will judge you based on your profile, social profile, not your CV, not your not your interview techniques, but what they see online. And if they don't see what they want and it doesn't match it, it doesn't match what you have, then it's going to fall down. So, um, uh, what was the first one? I can't remember what the first one was. Oh, do what you love, <laughs> what you be love. social. Yeah. And the third one is is never give up. Yeah. And, and that's very you know you hear that a lot, but it's so the, the the gold is just around the corner. The problem is you don't know which corner. Yeah. You have no idea which corner, yeah. so you've got to keep on going, keep on turning, keep on going, keep on turning, and then the gold will there, and the gold will appear in a format that you've never expected. Absolutely. If someone said to me three, four years ago, you'd be launching a TV channel on a podcast, I wouldn't have believed it. But so, all of a sudden, that the format that my business is taking is very different to what I thought. But it's allowing it to just fester in, the, in this atmosphere and see what comes back. Absolutely, it is, it's evolving, it's yeah. alive at the end of the day. Massively, yeah. and it's fluid, Absolutely. It's, it's constantly liquid yeah. and it's never, it's never static. No, no. Just, like a, just like a stream. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Thank you so much for joining me. That's all right, you're welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you after so long oh, no, as so, well. We'll connect, <laughs> that's, that's a great thing about social, we're well, connected on social so yeah. much and fine with me. I think 2004, yeah, 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 I think yeah, it, it was, probably was. was. Yeah, yeah, something on top. Well, thank you so much to my listeners for joining us today. You can catch up with the interview with Beiju and all my other fantastic guests on my website, www.thehelenwindershow.com. I'll speak to you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you.